Chapter 11. The first year at the farm went by quickly. In October, another group of workers arrived from Japan, 13 of them, silk growers and farmers, some of them samurai. They came to San Francisco on the steamer America, then up the river to Sacramento, and by wagon to Gold Hill, just as Oke's group had done. Some of them were from the Aizu area, and Oke hoped they would bring news of her family, but there was none. In February, they received and planted 140,000 three-year-old tea plants. In March, the rain finally subsided, and Mrs. Schnell gave birth to a second daughter, Mary. Oke could not imagine that a baby would bring such joy to so many people. Mrs. Veerkamp visited frequently, especially after Mary was born. Mrs. Veerkamp had five sons and no daughters. Mrs. Veerkamp often brought fresh bread. The smell was pungent and strong. It was sourdough bread, a funny name, thought O.K., who at first also thought it had a funny taste. It tasted nothing like the flat rice cakes Mrs. Schnell and O.K. made, which were quite mild in flavor. When Mrs. Veerkamp visited, Mrs. Schnell always served tea, and today was a tea day. Both of the girls were napping. O.K. set the water to boil on the stove. She placed a teapot and three Japanese tea bowls, the size of large cups, no handles, on the table. She reached into the container of tea leaves with the tips of her fingers, grasped a small bunch of dry leaves and dropped them into the teapot. As soon as the water came to a boil, she poured the boiling water over the leaves and then let the tea steep for a few minutes. Mrs. Schnell poured the tea. The aroma of fresh hot tea filled the room and enveloped the ladies in comfort as they sat in peaceful quietness. One day after the rain had ceased, when the weather was warm and the ground dry, O.K. decided to take the girls for a walk. She bound the baby to her back in a shawl with the ends securely tied around her shoulders and waist. She took Francis's hand and said, Come, Francis Chen, today I am going to show you my favorite place on the entire farm. And off they went. O.K. sang cheerfully as she and Francis climbed the hill to the north of the farmhouse. She usually came here by herself when Francis and Mary were napping. Winter had been very cold and wet, the ground muddy, so O.K. waited until the weather was pleasant before she brought the girls with her. Now the trees behind the house were beginning to show pink with the budding of first blossoms, and she knew the hill would show signs of spring, too. O.K. carried a basket filled with fruit, rice balls, and a light quilt. She hurried up the hill just as she always did. Frances scurried along beside her. When they reached the knoll, she unfolded the quilt and spread it out on the grass underneath a tall pine tree. She very gently laid Mary, still sleeping, down on the quilt. As she kneeled back and looked around, she felt happy, for the view from here reminded her of Japan. Look, Frances Chen, said O.K., look at the flowers. They are everywhere. Surely, they are feeling the warmth of the sun. The hill today was spectacular, with the wild flowers did seem satisfied that the end of winter was finally here, for they had burst forth in bunches of reds, yellows, blues, and purples. The dirt was covered with a carpet of tender new grass, silken to the touch. Oke turned around slowly, stretching her arms out to the sun, filling herself with its warmth, while Francis imitated her. O.K. began to sing as she took Francis's hands and led her in a simple Japanese folk dance. They bowed and dipped and turned and moved their arms gracefully in and out and around. Together they danced and sang on top of O.K.'s hill. Finally, they bowed to each other and giggled. O.K. enjoyed sharing her hill with Francis. At that moment, she felt more like an older sister than a nanny. She felt the family love an older sister would feel toward her siblings. O.K. Okay kneeled on the quilt next to Mary, who was now awake and gurgling happily. Francis scampered around the hillside, gathering wildflowers. As O.K. Okay looked out past the hills to the west, it was easy for her to imagine herself at home in her father's garden. She listened to a bird singing nearby, and it also reminded her of home. O.K.'s okay heart was singing, too. Look, O.K., okay, said Francis as she held out a bright red feather. O.K. Okay reached for it and smiled. This is a bird's feather, Francis Chen. The bird is called a finch. If you are very quiet, I think you can hear him. Francis was as quiet as a four-year-old girl could be, but the bird did not appear. O.K. took a piece of rice ball out of the basket and tossed it onto the grass. 
Soon there was a rustling sound in the tree and a pretty red bird appeared, sitting on one of the branches. He was a funny little bird with a crossed bill, and he looked at them and then at the rice ball. He tilted his head, he flicked out his tail, he fluffed up his wings. He was quite the actor for his small audience. Finally, he flew down to the grass, picked up some of the treat, and then ate every bit of it. When he was finished, he flew back to the tree, fluffed himself out all over, lifted his head and sang, Cheep, 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 chia, chia. Oh, said Francis, that was pretty. More songs, please. She was delighted when the little bird bowed, as though he too was happy. He sang cheerfully for a long time. Too soon it was time to go back to the farmhouse. Will we see the little bird again? asked Francis. I am certain we will, said O.K. He is always at home when I come to visit. As Francis skipped down the hill, O.K. laughed and said, He looks just like the birds in my father's garden. <laughs>